Hello, my little stars. It's me, Twinkle Phoenix. And honestly, I'm going to try really hard not to spoil anything. That's why I had to pause there because I had to control myself. This is a visual novel, which before I say what its title is called, I highly recommend you give it a chance and either play it for yourself or watch someone else play it. There are so many different routes and the one I chose, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to handle the other ones. Either way, without further ado, welcome to Dating Start, a romantic visual novel with various different routes you can take. Not all of them are romantic, but the one I choose is the romantic route with Sans. But I was not prepared for what happened through this. Oh my goodness. Again, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but I do highly recommend you give it a chance. If you're an Undertale fan, or this is just something you might like, yeah, definitely have a look and enjoy. Long ago, war broke out between two races, humans and monsters. After a long battle, the humans emerged victorious and sealed the monsters underground. One day, a human child climbed the mountain and fell to the underground. As they travelled the world below, they made many monster friends along the way. But at the end of their journey, the human vanished, along with six human souls. And Asgore, king of the monsters, was destroyed. Ever since then, the monsters continue to look for a way to leave the underground. For if one human can become friends with monsters, then perhaps there is a chance for humans and monsters to exist peacefully together. As friends, as family, and maybe even... Oh, what, a, what a lovely intro and then we just go straight to this and I'm sitting here going, well, you were getting me like really involved then, like really absorbed in it and then it's like dating start and I'm like, well, never mind. Let's begin our adventure. Welcome to Dating Start. You finally wake up after being unconscious for who knows how long. The room is quiet, save for the rustling of the golden flowers beneath you as you sit up. Ah, the familiar golden flowers. Ah, this brings back so many traumatic memories for me. Flowey better not be hidden anywhere in this pile of flowers. I better not see Flowey. You sit still, taking in your surroundings, or lack of surroundings, since it's just a patch of grass and flowers and, you know, the cave wall. In your hand is a stick. Where did I get a stick? Why did I hold on to the stick the whole time? But it's not just any stick. Oh, no, no, no. A mountain stick. I thought you were about to say it was like a magic stick, like a magic wand or something, but no, it's a mountain stick. I'd be more impressed if it was a Snowden stick, only because of that one twig that snaps when Sans shows up. It seems nice and sturdy. A bit heavy, too. Why would a stick be heavy? Do I take a branch? Sounds more like a branch. A branch would be heavier. A few wax wouldn't be enough to break this thing. Okay, so it's not a thin stick. It's a thick stick. You must have grabbed it while you were falling. Ah, good. So my character does have some common sense to grab for something to hold on to when I fall. Now, question, did I jump? Was I pushed? What is the situation with me coming down here? Did someone try to get rid of me? Hmm. Falling. That's right. You had fallen. And these golden flowers beneath you must have broken your fall. In truth, would they really have saved me? Ah, 
Miss Busters, get on to that. Find out, can flowers really save you from falling? Goodness knows how far down into the core of a mountain. But then again, these are probably magic flowers. Granted, you still feel sore in some spots. Hopefully I landed on my bottom. As you look up, the walls of this room climb higher and higher and higher until you can't see nothing, probably. With no end in sight. The only way to go is forward into the darkness. Because in this situation, since we went really far down, we literally have to be feeling along the wall. But thankfully, this is a video game. So it's okay. I can see where I'm going. Walking into the next room, you notice that it's quiet here too. There's not much except for a small patch of grass in the middle. Up ahead is a large stone doorway, much like the one you just walked through. No. You get the feeling you're not alone. Poof, better not be flowery or I'm punching a flower. Oh, dang it, it's flowery. Howdy. I'm flowery. Flowery the flower. Gosh, it's been so long since you've actually done my voice, Twinkle. Good to say you can still do it. Congratulations. Now let's continue, shall we? Hmm, you're new to the underground, aren't ya? Golly, you must be so confused and pretty stupid to fall down here in the first place. You humans are all the same. Someone ought to teach you how things work around here, says the flower. After all, I can tell you're here for a very special reason. You can? What gave it away? Was it the stick in my hand? Actually, I should probably poke him with the stick. Can I get an option to prod him? Why not? I mean, I don't have a fireball handy, but I can definitely poke you. You're looking for love, right? Don't you poke your tongue out at me. Why, look at your level. You only have a love of one. Don't go looking at my level without my permission. Rude? But from what I see in your soul. Stop looking at people's souls without permission, Flowey. It's rude and it's a violation of privacy. You have the potential for a max level of 10. Oh really, and how can you tell that by looking at my soul, Flower? Lucky for you, I can help you out. I have plenty of love to give, but only if you want it. So how about it? Do you want some love? Absolutely not, Flowey. I remember the first time I played Undertale, and I accepted your flowers, your pellets of friendship. You tried to kill me, so the answer is no, I'm not falling for it. You shake your head, rejecting Flowey's offer. No? Didn't anyone ever teach you it's rude to refuse a gift? No. But I, you asked if I wanted to, so it's not rude for me to decline it since you asked me to decide. So am I really the rude one here? You were technically secretly trying to kill me. Oh, are you scared? I ain't scared of you, Flower. I can poke you with a stick. I just so happen to have one. N no, Flowey, put those away. I promise these friendless pellets are chock full of nothing but pure love. Okay, now I raise the question, why are they pellets and not petals? It did say pellets, right? And not petals. Maybe it said petals and I just misread. Wouldn't surprise me. I'm tired. All you have to do is stand still so they touch your soul. I told you, I don't appreciate the violation of my personal space. 
Let alone my soul. You shouldn't be going anywhere near it, mister. I don't even know you, technically. Easy, right? Here we go. Just stay still. No, I'm dodging. I don't care. The bullet darts towards you. And you dodge out of the way. What? Surprised? I'm not that stupid. You know what's going on here, don't you? No, I just know you, Flowey. I just couldn't trust you as far as I could toss you. And I can toss you pretty far, Flower. But then again, I don't know how strong your roots are. You just wanted to see me suffer. What do you mean, see you suffer? I don't under... Oh, are you talking about Toriel when she throws a fireball at you? Yeah, I kind of enjoyed seeing that. It was funny. But then I felt really bad when I realised who you were. And then it was, like, pretty morbid when you suddenly realised the connection between him and Tori. Moving on. Die! <laughs> Flowey's laughter fades as the circle of bullets close in on you. No, 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 Flowey. Flowey, we should, we can talk about this. We can talk about this. There's no need. I don't ever trust Flowers. The gaps in the circle grow smaller and smaller until there's no escape. Am I actually going to die? Can I die in this? You feel the bullets singe your entire being as they hover right over your soul. I told you about the violation of personal space and my soul, and you shouldn't be anywhere near it, and yet you're doing it anyway. This is flowery is why we never trust flowers. Let's speak. I mean, have you seen Alice in Wonderland? Those flowers in that one are just flat out rude. You don't trust talking flowers. You shut your eyes tight. Oh God, I'm going to die, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Why did Flowey stop laughing? But nothing happens. What happened to Flowey? Flowey is nowhere to be found. Oh god. But you still feel like you're not alone. Yeah, um, if the wrestling doesn't give it away. But why is there wrestling if there's only one single patch of grass? And where is that coming from? Maybe it's Toriel? Maybe it's Mama Tori? Mama doesn't Mama doesn't say human like that. At all. This is this is mm human ah. wait my twig broke suddenly it can't be sans can it surely it's not sans but it's the same sound cue that was with sans wasn't it it was snowden but we're not in snowden what? the stick that was in your hand snaps in half like it was nothing you feel a presence behind you, waiting. Oh boy. Please be sans, please be sans, please be sans. And a voice seems to breathe right into your ear. Excuse you? I definitely wouldn't like that. Don't you know how to greet a new pal? Oh, thank goodness it's sans. Turn around and shake my hand. Oh, taking a deep breath, you turn around cautiously. Thank goodness it's sans. But all you see is a silhouette. The shadow extends a hand to you. Then after gathering the courage to do so, you reach out to take the stranger's hand. You never change, do you, Sans? <laughs> the old whoopee cushion and the hand trick. It's always funny. I am so happy it was Sans that came up behind us and not something else. <sighs> I'm Sans, Sans the skeleton. Can you believe that guy? Good thing he decided to leave you alone. 
So you're a human, right? Wow. I haven't seen a human down here since... Well... Since the last human that fell down here? You wouldn't happen to know that human, would you? Uh... <laughs> Which human? I only know about a legend, apparently. About a human that came down here, six souls. Poof, human's gone, souls were gone, poof! And then I fell down here. I'm amazing. I don't know what I came here for, though. Ping. Actually, don't answer that. It was kind of a weird question. It's not like every human that falls into the underground knows each other, right? Yeah, poof. I'm sure they don't come from, like, the same village or city or anything that's, like, nearby or something. Huh. Definitely. Kids just, you know, they normally go wandering through the forest alone and then end up tumbling down into the side of a mountain that's inhabited by monsters all the time. They never talk to each other. They don't, like, pre-plan this. So it would be interesting if they did. Can you imagine they all gather around and they have, like, a group? A secret society. <laughs> the Explorer Pipsqueaks. Just sending each other up there to go and do dumb stuff. Anyway, I pass by here every day to check if any humans have fallen. Don't worry, kiddo. I'm not gonna capture you or anything. I'm just gonna take you to see a friend of mine. Is it Mama Tori? Is it Papyrus? As long as it's not in die. Unless Ndai has like totally chilled out and has not got the obsession with using spears to greet people. Because I'm still partially traumatized by that. I'm sure she'd love to see another human. She used to check the runes for humans herself. Lately though, she's been pretty busy. Okay, he's talking about Mama Tori. So I've been helping her out, leading humans through the ruins. Wait, so you've led other humans? Was there other humans before me? If so, how many? Who are they? Or am I like the first human in like forever that he's seen? But you look like you're pretty independent, right? Why don't you go on ahead without me? You're gonna let me go by myself? But I fell in my bottom, probably. I could have had concussions. You don't have to really let me go off in a direction by myself, right? After I got tapped by a flower. That sounds pretty stupid when I say it though. I'll catch up with you. San saunters away and through the doorway you just came from. Ah, oh, okay, so it's gonna teleport that way. My guess is probably Sans is gonna watch us and see what we do. That's what I'm assuming. Okay, so Blue Heart is Sans when he's talking. You decide not to question it and continue towards the doorway up ahead. The next few rooms are quiet, save for the crinkling leaves and soft splashing of water. You feel like you're wandering aimlessly, climbing upstairs and walking down hallways. The past seems simple enough, beginning to end, and yet it minders Min, 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 meanders along its journey, up and down, side to side. In one room, there are switches clearly marked as correct, and one tempting switch that isn't. Thankfully, you don't have to do anything here. The path is already clear. And eventually, you make it into a smaller room. Oh, hi Sans. Sans is already standing there smiling at you. Hey, uh, there you are. What took you so long? Well, I had to walk the whole way, whereas you just teleported. So, I was asked to help you feel more comfortable talking to monsters. I get it. Some of us can really rattle your bones, huh? And I... Hmm. The old lady said there'd be a dummy in this room. But, uh, I don't see one. Guess we'll have to improvise. I'll be the dummy. Are you sure you want to be the dummy? After all, you could call me a bit of a numbskull.
Your breath catches in your throat as your soul leaps out. Soul, don't do st Oh, hi. Okay, kid, it's really simple. All you gotta do is strike up a friendly conversation. Easy enough, right? Okay. Flirt. Okay, we'll try talking to him. Your sons, how's he doing? Son simply shrugs. I can't complain. I got a ton of stuff done today. A skeleton. Choke. You make a bad pun about skeleton. Son seems to have heard it already, but he chuckles anyway. Nice one, kiddo. Flirt. You wink at Sans. Sans winks back at you. What? Got something in your eye? Flirt. You tell Sans you like his smile. You swear his smile widens. To tell you the tooth? It's hard for me not to. Flirt. You ask Sans to remind you what the hip bones connected to. Oh my! His. <laughs> How old is my character? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sans. His eye lights shrink for a split second before he regains his composure. <laughs> hey, hey, hey now, I think that's enough practice. You feel your soul retreat back into your chest. It's only now you realize that your heart is racing. Good news, bad news, kiddo. The bad news is, you could have had a better conversation with me. What do you mean? The good news is, you'll never have to engage in an encounter just to interact with someone. That'll just be silly. And don't worry too much about making the right choice. Just say and do what feels right when the time comes. No one's gonna judge you. I mean... Unless you really screw up. Uh. <laughs> Relax, buddy. It was just a joke. You'll be fine. Well, I guess I should be taking you back to new home. Don't worry. It's not too far. Not when I know a shortcut. Follow me. Sun leads you towards the doorway you just came from. Did I actually do that wrong? I was just curious to see, like, what the flirting was going to be with Sans, how he was going to react to it. You don't even have a second to think how illogical it is. The second you step foot through the doorway... Oh no, you fall into nothingness. Oh, am I going to get disorientated? Darker, yet darker. I swear, if Gosta jumps out at me. You feel like you're floating and falling at the same time. Weightless. You try to look at your hands. They aren't there. But you can still feel them. Your reflex is to find something to grab onto. To ground yourself. There's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing. Period. But in the blink of an eye, your surroundings change. Your legs buckle as your feet touches the ground once again. Ugh. Hey, kiddo, you okay? You try to gather your bearings, but your legs wobble, causing you to buckle once again. I got you, kiddo. Sun slides next to you, acting as a wall of support to keep you standing. Careful there. A shortcut can be pretty disorientating the first time around. You finally manage to plant your feet on the ground, holding yourself up as best you can. Sensing your steady stance, Sun steps away. It gets easier each time. Don't worry. S Sans, is that you? Hey, Tori. I got someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, is that so? Hi, Mama Tori. What's wrong? A human? Oh, my! She flocks to your side and you feel her very presence towering over you. Why, hello, my child. Though, I suppose you seem to be much older than a human child, are you not? Okay, so I am older. Thank you for clarifying. Still, I can't help but use that term of endearment. That's totally fine, Tori. I'm fine with it. I hope that he's alright. 
I found the human near the beginning of the ruins. Tori's arms. Fuzzy and warm, wrap around you in a protective hug. Oh my goodness, Mama Tori! Oh, you poor innocent one. Do not be afraid. You are safe here. She lets go and you finally take note of the cozy home you're in. The smell of buttery pie crust wafts through the air, lingering on your nose. But before you can get lost in the scent, the goat lady coaxes you out of your trance with her gentle eyes. My name is Toriel, and I am the caretaker of New Home. She's also the queen. Oh, Sans, there is absolutely no need for formalities. Do not focus on my title, my child. I am just a silly old lady who worries too much. Speaking of, please allow me to check if you have any injuries. I promise I will not harm you. I trust you more than I trust that flower. She hovers her hand over you, hesitant almost, as if you're made of glass. Aww. You don't appear to have any major injuries. Yeah, thankfully I dodged a lot of bullets from a, a very, very peavy flower. That's incredible considering the height of the mountain peak. I know, right? It's, it's extremely incredible since Frisk in all honesty was a child and should have broken at least some bones. Uh, thank goodness you're right. Looks like you got things taken care of here. I should get going. Are you sure you do not wish to stay a little longer, Sans? I have some snail pie left over from this morning if you'd like. Nah, I'm okay. As much as pie would like that very much. My brother gets kind of crusty without his bedtime story. <laughs> Your puns are always so fulfilling. Thank you for looking after the human sense. Have a good night. Sure thing, Tori. Night. Sans walks up to you and places a friendly hand on your shoulder. Take care of yourself, kid. And Sans takes his leave. Tori squeezes your hand affectionately. Well, my child, tomorrow I will be at the ruins on royal business. You're free to explore the underground on your own. I apologize, I cannot be with you on your first day here. But worry not, the monsters will not harm you. If they do, I will definitely burn them to cinders. I'm sure that you will get along just fine with everyone. Perhaps you will become good friends with some of them. For now, however, you should get some rest. It's been a long day, has it not? Come, I will show you to your room. Tori takes your hand and leads you down a hallway. All along the hallway are golden flowers. Yes. Mama, you should totally get rid of those golden flowers. You can't trust them. One could be a flower in disguise. They're similar to the ones that broke your fall earlier. Once you both reach the end of the hallway, Tori stops at the door, at the last door, and leads you inside. Aw, oh, familiar room. Do we have to? Flowers are going to be forever tormenting my nightmares, I swear. Here you are. Please make yourself at home. There are some pajamas on the bed that you can change into. Are they going to be the right size for me, though? She gestures to the neatly folded sack of pajamas at the foot of the bed. I can wash your clothes so that you have something to wear tomorrow. Also, you'll find a special treat when you wake. She embraces you once again, swaying with you in a silent lullaby. I know it can, it can be daunting being in a new world without anyone you know. Oh! Perhaps I can tell you a bedtime story to put you at ease. Go ahead and change into your pajamas. I will be right back with some hot chocolate. Tori steps out of the room, leaving the door open just a crack. You kick off your shoes and change into the pajamas, setting aside your clothes at the foot of the bed. Then you clumsily climb into the bed and pull the blanket over you. Oh, this is good so far. I'm enjoying myself. Eventually, Toriel returns with a mug of hot chocolate. Mmm. Oh, that looks so cute. A handful of mini marshmallows set atop a dollop of whipped cream. She hands it to you and you take a sip. The rich warm chocolate makes you feel like you're drinking a comforting hug. If you're settled, my child, I brought a story to read to you. It's called The Little Snail and the Big New Town. How very appropriate. 
I'm very thoughtful too. Toriel tugs the covers around you so you're nice and snug. She then sits on the edge of the bed. Once upon a time, there was a little snail that moved to a big new town. At first, the snail was scared. They didn't know what they wanted to do in this new place, and the snail felt very lonely. But one day, the snail met some very nice friends. They made them feel very welcome. They even met a special friend whom they grew very close to. With these newfound friends, the little snail wanted ex to explore everything. They watched a movie, they had a picnic in the park. They even got to watch fireworks on top of a building. And though the town was still very big for a little snail, the snail didn't feel so lonely anymore. The end. With a smile, Toriel closes the book. I hope you enjoyed the story. I know you're probably too old to listen to bedtime stories, but I thought it would help you feel more at home. For now, please try to get some rest. I will be here if you need me. Good night. Good night, Mom. Did you? Did you just call me Mom? Call me whatever you like. After you finish the hot chocolate, Toriel takes the empty mug from you. Standing up, she places the storybook on the shelf. Then she picks up the clothes you left at the foot of the bed. Sweet dreams, my child. I See, I'm going to keep telling her, Mom, because honestly, Tori is like that. Tori is a mother figure. Either way you look at it, she is a mom. The light lingers a little longer, but with a flip of the switch, they're out. And the sound of the door closing signals Toriel's leave. A wave of exhaustion washes over you and you're finally alone, sleep to claim you. They can start you off to keep popping up. It's morning when you wake. At least it feels like it's morning. It's hard to tell when the sun has has nowhere to seep through. Your body feels well rested, continuing to sink into the soft mattress in hopes of staying there. As you glance around the room, you notice something on top of the bookcase. Pulling off the covers, you slip out of bed. What is it? Oh, it's the plate with a slice of pie. Aww. The aroma of butterscotch and cinnamon mingles in the air. Right next to it are your clothes, washed and folded with a note on top. Be good, all right? Of course I'll be good. I'll be a really good. You carefully set aside the note and change into your clothes. They're soft with hints of linen and lavender. If I'm honest, I hate the smell of lavender in general. It just doesn't agree with me, but everybody else in my house seems to like lavender. I don't know why. But the medley of butterscotch cinnamon pie calls to you. Hmm... Save for later, I might need it. You decide to take it with you. Save it for later. Just then you feel the faint presence of someone's soul buzzing about. You slip on your shoes and step into the hallway, curious of whom it could be. Glancing around, all you see are the golden flowers among the grey tones. I swear, Flowey, if you are here. There isn't anyone here. You decide to walk down the hallway until you reach the foyer. I swear, Flowey, are you stalking me? With each step you take, the energy of the soul's presence gets more and more boisterous. Do I still have that stick handy? Please be sans, please be sans, please be somebody else but not flowy. Until finally it booms loud and clear. Is it papyrus? Ah, it's papyrus. As soon as it said booming, I'm like, it's papyrus. A lady Asgore must have already left. I'll just go ahead and... Oh no, he spotted me. <laughs> oh my god! Is that? That must be. It is! Oh my god! Hello, human. It is very nice to meet you. I, the Great Papyrus, Captain of the Royal Guards, have been expecting you. I've been awaiting this very moment since yesterday. Do not worry. I'm not here to capture you. I'm only here on very important royal business. Is Papyrus going to show me around? I 
was watering the flowers. Oh no, please stay away from the flowers, Papyrus, please. I am begging you, there is a very angry little flower around here somewhere. And he's called Flowey. My brother Sans was supposed to be here with me. He told me he'd introduce me to you. However, he was napping all night. And into the morning, as usual. Who needs seven hours naps at night? Well, since he won't be awake anytime soon, would you care to go on a date with me? And by date, I mean a friendly friends date. As friends. Unless we're friends first, I will correct this immediately. Oh wait, I was like, am I skipping that or is Papyrus doing that? It's Papyrus doing it. That was so confusing. Ahem, human. Will you be my friend? Yes. <laughs> we're friends now. Hi, now start. Oh dear. With that, Papyrus snatches your hand and runs out the door with you in tow. I've already got kidnapped in the very first episode. Oh my. The world changes around you, turning into a wonderful wonderland of snow framed by the tall pine trees. Ah, It surprises you how it got so cold so quick. Oh god, it's the river person. Papyrus opted to take you on a boat ride to get here. And the whole time, the skeleton rambles about your surroundings. As the boat finally drifts to a stop, Papyrus leaps out and gestures around him. Here we are! Thank you, mysterious river person, for going out of your way to drop us off here. You thank the river person as well and step off the boat. Your feet crunches into the freshly fallen snow. The hooded figure simply nods. Tra la 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 la. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Okay, so this is advice for me, meaning if I don't succeed this time, it's fine. Just try it again. Okay, got it. Oh, don't. If it doesn't really matter. And they push off, the boat rejoining the flow of the river. Papyrus bumbles around you, buzzing with excitement. Welcome to Snowden! I hope you like puzzles, human. Oh, I hate puzzles. It is customary to monsters to bombard humans with lots of riveting puzzles of all shapes and sizes. For today, I thought it'd be fun to begin with a maze. I hate mazes. Do not worry, I will be with you every step of the way. However, that does not mean that I will give you anything away. This way, me. <laughs> You stick close as he leads the way. Despite his energy pouring out in space, he takes extra care to guide you. Oh, so sweet. The trees begin to overtake the path. Until finally, the path branches. Papyrus marches, comes to a halt. Well, he might prepare to be impressed and thoroughly bamboozled. I give you the labyrinth of twisting confusion. Crafted and created by yours truly. Take all the time you like to solve it. And if you get stuck, you can talk to me for encouragement. But know this, I will not reveal the correct answer. So human, which way would you like to go? Talk. I thought the maze would be a pretty straightforward puzzle, but I think it's just challenging enough. Talk. Okay. But I think it's just challenging enough. Wait, what? I thought a puzzle would be pretty straightforward. Oh! <laughs> straight. You tell the price you like to go straight. Very well, human. This way. And he whisks you away down the path you choose. I think he is technically hinting in what he said. I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to follow what Papyrus says. You make your way along the, Snowden, the snowy trail. The trees stretch out in front of you. Eventually you reach another fork in the road. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Here we are at another decision. Which way shall you go? Talk. I believe in you, human. I'm sure you'll get this one right. Right. 
You tell the price to to go right. Say no more, human. Right, we shall go. And the two of you are racing through the maze again. Papyrus keeps an eye on you the whole way as he jogs by your side, leading you to the next area. He's so sweet. You come to a halt as the trail branches once again. You feel Papyrus' soul skipping with excitement. Here we are, human! The final part of this maze. I saved something a bit more challenging for the end. This time, there are three possible paths. So which path would you like to take? Talk. We're at the home stretch. There's really nothing left for me to say. The exit is right over there. Hmm. We're at the home stretch. There's really nothing left for me to say. The exit is right over there. Hmm. either left or it's right but he says left first and then he said it's right over there left okay this is the first time i'm gonna see it because i don't know if it is the left or if it's right because he says both of them let's talk one more time we're at the home stretch so there's really nothing left for me to say the exit is right over there left you tell me sorry to go left very well Shall we? Papyrus guides you down the path you pick, taking care so you don't get lost. But soon enough, you feel a strange sort of familiarity. Hmm. Time to stop. I'm sorry, human, but you didn't make it through the maze. Hmm. You said that I chose the correct path once, but twice incorrect. So I gotta do the opposite of what I hear him say. Talk. It would be pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's assume I'll go to the right with him. I'll do the opposite of what he says until the end where he just goes straight for. Is it right again? Okay, I'm just gonna quickly go up here. Okay. I don't know, see, I'm just, I... Left this time. Okay. And he says that it's right and straightforward, meaning it has to be... Talk. He does say left and he says right so it's straight hmm oh my god i did it i did it this time <laughs> yay you both walk a little further through the area until the pirate stops once again he dashes a little ahead of you and throws his arms into the air wowie you managed to find your way out of the labyrinth of twisted confusion okay so pretty much to get through this all you have to do is listen to what papyrus says he gives you a hint of what path not to take because he said right left and so on and so forth i noticed he was saying it in the sentences so i went from that but i was doing what he was saying and not the opposite so just do the opposite and that'll get you through it <laughs> i knew you could do it I must say I'm very impressed with your maze-solving abilities. The tall skeleton swings you around, his soul practically heating up with frosty air. After a minute or two, he sets you back down and clears his throat. Now, this next part is not made by me. It is made by my brother, San. Oh, for God's sake, Sans! On the ground in front of you is a mere piece of paper. I don't have to do this, right? <laughs> Suddenly you feel your personal bubble pop as Papyrus shoves his face next to yours. He looks over your shoulder. What did he even? A crossword puzzle? 
<laughs> Human, I apologize on behalf of my brother. He provided you with a puzzle so easy, it's insulting. Yeah. ya. Hi, Sans. The snow crunches as Sans appears next to his brother. If Papyrus had eyeballs, he would have rolled them far back into his skull. Oh, so you're finally awake, Sans. How very nice of you to join us. The human and I are already bonded. And we even solved the labyrinth of twisted confusion. Nice, bro. Yes, it's very nice. If you would like to accompany us, I was going to see if I could find more puzzles to pick at. But isn't it about time for you to water the throne room flowers again? Ah, oh, biscuits. Ah, you're right. How could I have almost neglected my duties? Human, we will pick this up later. Uh, thank you for the wonderful time. And sounds perhaps you should recalibrate your puzzles. A crossword, really? It's not even days. today's crossword puzzle. <sighs> Were you doing anything important this morning? I was doing something very important. And what would that be? Sleeping. Pack! I don't have time for this! And Papyrus runs off into the air, somehow crossing a non-existent bridge over your head. Sans turns his attention to you, a spark of twinkling pride in his eyes. My brother is so cool. Anyway, all they're running around. Must have made you hungry. Let's go to Grillby's. It's not too far from here. Especially when I know a shortcut. Oh god, we're doing this again. Sans walks on ahead and you follow suit. Oh god. It doesn't take long for the empty void to embrace you once more like a long lost companion. The lingering scent of snow and pine dissolves into the aroma of grease and sandalwood smoke. The frigid air that once pricked your skin melts with a fireplace warmth. Patrons are engaging in delightful chatter as the smell of food and drink entices you. Sun nudges you with his elbow. First shortcut, huh? He turns his attention to the patrons, greeting the room with a lazy shrug. Hey everyone! You trail behind him as he makes his way over to the bar. Various monsters turn to greet him as he walks by. Hey Sands! Hi Sands! Greetings, Sans. Hi, Sans. Sans, weren't you here this morning? This morning? Nah, it couldn't have been me. I could barely get my <laughs> octopus out of bed. A collective snickering burst from the group. Sansy, save that for the show. Worried I'll turn a bone dry. Relax, I got a ton of material for tonight. A skeleton. And the bar transforms into snickery from snickery into scattering wheezing, chuckling, and head shakes. With a playful little wing, Sans motions to one of the bar stools. Here, get comfy. You climb onto the stool and take a seat. Oh my god, Sans really Ha <laughs> <sighs> Whoopsie! Watch where you sit. Sometimes we are just put whoopee cushions on the seats. Anyway, let's order it. What do you want? Oh my god, Sans, really. You never change, do you? You never ever change. Oh my god. Return to you. Um. problem is, if I order either of these, he's gonna ask if I want ketchup and I'm going to cry. I am 100% going to cry. He's gonna make a joke. Right. Yeah, this sounds pretty good. Yeah, because you get ketchup. Sounds flags down a humanoid flame monster behind the bar. Will be. We'll have a double order of fries. Grilby nods and retreats into the back room. It's a little quieter without the sound of crackling flames. 
Somehow, he isn't setting the wooden floor on fire. Why would he? Scrappy. Probably fireproof wood. Sans interrupts your gawking. So, did you have a great time with my brother? This is very great. Yeah, my brother is the coolest. You could be cool too if you were, if you wore that costume all day. And he's captain of the Royal Guards. Which, in my opinion, is very impressive. The wands returned as the bartender emerged from the back room. After setting the plates down in front of you, Grillby goes back to cleaning the glassware. The golden fries are precariously piled. Not a single fry looks soggy. That is like a good way for a fry. Soggy fries are icky. At least in my opinion. The savory smell invites you to pop a few of them into your mouth. But before you can do so, Sun stungs the ball in front of you. <laughs> you want some ketchup? Yes, I actually lo I love ketchup. I, I love ketchup. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I am the person in my household who loves ketchup on my food. Um, everybody else likes brown sauce, and I just really don't like the taste of it. I find it to be too burny. I just, I'm the only one in the house that likes ketchup. Whereas everybody else likes the other one. <laughs> it's not fair. You accept Sam's offer and he hands the bottle over to you. Is the, the lid's gonna come off in it. Here you go. You take the ball and tilt it over your food with the utmost care. Hmm, I wonder what's gonna happen. But it seems all your care is for naught. Ah, Sans. Now your brunch is swimming in a pool of red. Sans chuckles at the ketchup catastrophe. How did that happen, kiddo? I wonder. Here, you can have mine. I'm not really hungry anyway. Chuckling once again, he pushes his plate in your direction. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you something. Do you know what love is? Uh, do I want... Well, I kind of do. Well, he said L-O-V-E. Uh... Chloe didn't actually explain it. He just said it was love. No. That's good. I can give a quick lesson. Love. It's actually an anagram. It stands for level of violence. Level for short. Your soul gains it by hurting others. Not to be confused with love, which is completely different. But I'm sure you already know what that is. I just figured I should tell you how the underground works. You know, since you're gonna be stuck here with us. Are you gonna go weird again? You ask Sand what he means by that. Yeah, sorry to be the bearer of bad news. You see, there's a barrier that traps everyone in the underground. And they say the only way to shatter the barrier is with seven human souls. But you're really the only human around here right now. We, Asgore, did have six souls before you arrived. But then Asgore was destroyed. And the souls in the last human, they all disappeared. Don't worry, we're not gonna take your soul. I'm not even gonna lay a scratch on you. And that's not just because of the degree. I promised Toriel I'd watch over any human that fell down here. And since you haven't proven yourself to be anything else that since you haven't proven yourself to anything else to be anything else, that includes you. Sam paused a moment, mulling over his next word before speaking again. Look, I hate making promises. But if it makes you feel any better, I promise that to you too. Technically, it's just the same promise, but a little more personalized. Sounds good? Hopping off the bar stool, he looks to you with open arms, inviting you into a hug. I promise to look out for you, kiddo. Hug. You hop down from the bar stool and take a moment to look at him. Your hands fumble at your sides. And then, taking your chance, you wrap your arms around him. Really, Sam? <laughs> I had to, it sounds. Sounds burst into laughter and you push him away with a snort. <laughs> Whoopee cushions in the hoodie. That's a new guy I'm working on. <laughs> Thanks for testing it out. And now, what do we say we get out of here? I actually have a favor I need to ask you. He nods to Grillby behind the counter. Thanks, Grillby, put it on my tab. 
Then he shuffles towards the door and you follow him out. 